So we have to start taking a look at the PN junction in thermal equilibrium to determine how it behaves. We determined that at thermal equilibrium, the PN junction builds a depletion region across the interface, some of which lies on the P side and some of which lies on the N side. We can now divide the PN, the PN junction, the device uh, overall, into four sections. There's the electrically neutral P section and the electrically neutral N section, and then there's the depletion region on the P side and the depletion region on the N side. So we have two regions, the N and the P regions, which are still electrically neutral, where N is equal to ND plus and P is equal to NA minus on the N side and the P side respectively. And there are the two depletion regions across the interface. First of all, how does the, um, how does the equilibrium band diagram look for the PN junction? When we say we have an equilibrium band diagram, we know one thing about it which is that it has a constant Fermi level. So we first draw a constant Fermi level, and this is the interface. So far away from the interface, we return to the electrically neutral P type. And in the electrically neutral P type, we can go back to the situation where we have the EV and the EC being flat, and EV is closer to EF than EC. So the Fermi level is below the band gap. Also, far away from the interface on the end side, we return to the situation where EC is closer to uh, EF than EV. The band gap on the end side is the same as the band gap on the P side because both sides are silicon. In fact, the entire device is silicon. And uh, far away from the interface, we have a diagram that looks exactly like the flat band diagram that we saw in the previous video. Within the depletion regions, on the other hand, so these are the electrically neutral regions. Within the depletion regions, we see a bending of the uh, band diagram, and EC and EV have to remain parallel to each other at all times, and we see bending of the band diagram uh, through the depletion region. This bending is, is going to be nonlinear, in fact, it's going to be quadratic. And we will derive why it is quadratic, and we will un understand fully why it is uh, quadratic. But it is band bending, it's not tilting in a linear fashion, it's bending in a quadratic fashion. It's also sometimes useful to also draw EI, which is the Fermi level in intrinsic silicon, which is the middle of the band gap. This tells us when we are in uh, N-type silicon and when we are in P-type silicon, whenever uh, EF is above EI, we are in N-type silicon. Whenever it's below it, we are in P-type silicon. So we have to start deriving um, quantities that describe the PN junction. For example, we want to know the width of the depletion region, which is the summation of Xn and Xp. It is also important to know how the electric field looks like. Is it a linear function of distance? Is it a quadratic function of distance? We have to justify why band bending is quadratic, the way we have described it. And to do this, we have to use a few basic physics equations. So first of all, we have to use Poisson's equation, which says that the uh, dE by dx, the uh, derivative of the electric field uh, with respect to the distance x, is equal to the volumetric charge density rho divided by the permittivity of the material epsilon. And we also have to use the relationship between electric field and potential, which is that the uh, electric field is the derivative of potential. This is actually the definition, or one of the most important definitions of electric field. We also know that energy, in this case, for example, the energy of the conduction band, or of the valence band, or of the intrinsic uh, Fermi level, just not the energy of the Fermi level, because the Fermi level can be constant while the other levels are non-constant. But energy is related to potential because E is equal to minus Q times V. The negative sign in this equation is important because potential is the potential of a positive charge, whereas energy in the band diagram is drawn for electrons, which are negative charges. Now, combining these two equations together, we get the equation for electric field in terms of 
energy. And so this gives us a, uh, an important conclusion. In fact, the electric field is directly proportional to the slope of the, uh, of the band diagram. So if you look at the band diagram and it's constant, that means that there's no electric field. If, it's, if it has a slope, then there is electric field. And so if you look at this band diagram in the electrically neutral regions, the band diagram is flat. And so there's no electric field. But in the depletion regions, there is a slope. And therefore, there is a built-in electric field, which is exactly what we concluded. So that makes sense, right? So the plan of action now is to look at areas which have volumetric charge. These areas with volumetric charge are going to give us an electric field. This electric field is going to give us a potential through this differential equation. And from all of these, we can start calculating built-in electric field and built-in potential. When we calculate built-in potential, we can calculate the width of the depletion region, which is what we care most about. So if we look at the band diagram here, there's actually nowhere with volumetric charge density other than the depletion region. So if we start by drawing the volumetric charge density, rho versus x, because this is like the first thing we know, we find that there's zero net charge in the electrically neutral P side and zero net charge in the electrically neutral N side. Why? Because that's by definition what happens in electrically neutral uh, parts. In the P side depletion region, on the other hand, we have a net negative charge and it is equal to minus Q and A. And on the N side depletion, we have a net positive charge of plus Q and D. We are assuming that these charges are constant with distance and this assumption is built upon one thing, that we have uniform doping on the P side and on the N side. If we have uniform doping, you have uniformly charged depletion regions, and it all makes sense. Now, if you look at, at this equation, it seems to suggest that the electric field is the integral of uh, the volumetric charge density divided by epsilon, which in this case is epsilon of silicon. So if we have a charge density that is uniform, as is the case here, then the electric field is going to be the integral of this constant volumetric charge density, and therefore we will have a linear electric field. And so, if we, tr if we try to sketch the electric field against distance, there will be no electric field in the electrically neutral sides because there is no volumetric charge. The electric field is going to start at a zero level on the P side, and then it's going to continue to increase in the negative direction towards some sort of maximum at the interface, and then it's going to in increase towards zero again in the, on the end side of the depletion region. Both sides will be linear because that's what the equation tells us, and so the electric field is going to be negative because the electric field is from the end side to the P side rather than from the P side to the end side. And finally, if we look at potential across the device, so in this case we are looking at potential. Potential is the integration of the electric field, but there is a negative sign, right? So if the electric field is decreasing, the potential is increasing, and vice versa, right? And so on the uh, P side, we have a negative slope for the electric field, which means that the electric field is decreasing. This means that the uh, potential will be a quadratic function and it will have a minimum rather than a maximum. It will have an x squared term, which is positive. And so it's going to increase like this. On the end side, on the other hand, we have a parabola with a maximum because we have a positive slope for the electric field. And so we have a negative x squared term and we will have a built-in field like this. The, the potential is constant in the electrically neutral regions. It's not zero, but it is constant. And so this amount is the total amount of built-in potential, V built-in, that is built-in in the, in, the, in, the, in the PN junction. 
This is an internally built-in potential that cannot be measured externally using a voltmeter. It is built in to create a drift current across the interface so that that drift current can then cancel out the diffusion current and it can reach a state of equilibrium where there is zero net current. So what, what, what controls the width of the, of the depletion region? The depletion region is going to be wide enough so that the amount of built-in field and the corresponding amount of built-in potential are large enough to create enough drift current to cancel out the, the, the diffusion current.